a quick demonstration of electronic reporting. Um, this came out in uh, fast version 4.3. Um, and essentially, if you are preparing 1099s in AP, or if you're preparing W-2, or for that matter, any type of governmental report in uh, payroll, um, then uh, federal e-filing and reporting uh, is definitely worthwhile. Um, does anyone have uh, e-filing or reporting installed? Okay, I'm sorry, I think everyone was We muted. have 1099. Okay, so you do process 1099 through electronic reporting? Yes, through AP. Okay, excellent, excellent. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to kind of uh, walk through how to install 1099 for actually electronic reporting. Oh, I don't know if we work. do electronic reporting. I'm sorry. Bridget's is not here to ask for that. I don't know if we do the electronic. I don't think so. I think we mail them out. Okay, which is fine. So, uh, so this will be a good um, segue to uh, have another option to process 1099. Um, because essentially, MassDOS gives you the ability, of course, to process 1099 um, and, uh, and process uh, W-2. Um, but as some of you may have encountered, um, trying to print them out of math, sometimes you have to align them. Um, sometimes they don't you know, process uh, uh, exactly on, on the 1099 that we'd like it to be. Well, electronic reporting essentially, you know, uh, not only uh, prints them out nice and clean, but then goes a step further. And if you have to um, process them electronically and send them to the IRS, um, we can. So what I'm going to do is first walk through how to install it on a workstation. Um, and then we'll actually uh, uh, take a look at some sample data in the ABC company. So uh, first thing I should mention is uh, electronic reporting is a workstation install. So uh, first to be able to process through electronic reporting, um, you have to run a client install of the software. And if those of you are familiar with running workstation setup, um, on your machine to access math, it's going to be in the same area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out my math. I'm actually going to go on my system to my math 90 directory. And I'm going to browse out to the same area that we would normally run our workstation setup. So we're going to go to the WK setup folder. And in here, uh, normally, we'll run WK Setup to uh, run a, a mask client on the machine. We're actually going to go to the Auto Run EXE. If you click on Auto Run EXE, you're going to get to a screen here. And the second uh, item here is Install Federal and State e filing and Reporting. It's a relatively minor install, so we're going to do it together. Now, it notices that I've already installed it on my machine. So it's just telling me, do I want to install it again? Yeah. I'm going to hit yes. And it's going to walk through the install. Again, it's not a terribly big install. We'll just let it uh, continue on. And again, for those of you, um, you know, depending on, on how your IT staff allows you to install software. You may have to come and, and, and have them install it for you. But as you can see, it's pretty much just as you go into the WK setup folder, clicking the Auto Run EXP, clicking on our second item. And we'll give them that. And I'll we'll click on Next. And we're just going to accept all the prompts. My computer is not as fast today as it usually is, but uh, as you can see, we're almost done. Ah. 
And so what uh, what the software is doing is actually um, loading up uh, programs that will allow you to um, visually see all of the forms, um, not just 1099s, 1096s, W2s. Um, we can even process I-9 for social payroll. There we go. So now we have uh, electronic filing installed on our system. We can go and launch MAP. And I'll actually go into the area of MAP to run it. Now keep in mind that we've installed this piece um, within MAP. However, um, you may still need to go to library master, main, and role maintenance and give folks the ability to go into that area of MAP. So in this case, um, 1099 electronic reporting, um, we would find a role. We would go into AP and Go into so we're going to have two areas here. Uh, so essentially, we have a couple of areas of security maintenance um, that we'll want to turn on. And um, I am just not seeing it at the moment, but I'll go ahead and uh, essentially find and let you guys know that uh, we want to be sure that someone has access to that area of map um, before they actually go in. And in terms of going in there, in the AP module, when we go into reports, you're now going to have Form 1099 e-filing and reporting. When we click on this button, We're now going to be on the 1099 side, uh, uh, pretty similar to what we have in our normal form 1099 printing. Um, it's going to ask us what type of 1099 form uh, that we're going to want to process. Now, before we even start processing, the first thing we're going to need to do is activate um, our account. Now, you're going to see it's telling us that um, to continue, you must be enrolled in Sage Software Online. Um, if don't have an account or you don't know your account, um, then we can certainly help you out. Um, if you want, you can shoot me an email at robert at goism.com or even bryce, b-r-y-c-e at goism.com. And we'll go ahead and help you. We'll set up a time where we can help you get a username and password from Sage's uh, uh, website. Once you have a username and password from there, uh, uh, from SageSoftware.com, then you can proceed. Okay, so this is another requirement, essentially, um, uh, getting set up uh, with Sage. Another requirement to getting set to getting set up with electronic reporting, um, uh, and we'll actually I'll save that for just a little bit later. Um, case the uh, needs to file uh, with the government. But in this case, what we're going to be doing is instead of printing Form 1099 um, from Form 1099 printing, we're coming to the e-filing and reporting option. 
then we're going to fill out uh, our miscellaneous um, our form type miscellaneous, and of course, uh, we don't have to report anything over or under six hundred dollars. So we're going to set our threshold for reporting at six hundred dollars. Um, our ABC company is set to the two thousand and ten. Now, this information here that's populating um, is essentially coming from company maintenance. So if you see a blank, um, chances are then in company maintenance, you don't have this information populated. Now you can certainly come in here and hand enter it at this point, but it's usually easier to go into company maintenance and simply populate it. So the next time you uh, process these, uh, it's already set. Okay, so we've uh, we've already activated our account. We have everything we need here populated. We're going to process it for all vendors. We are good to go. So I'm going to hit accept. First thing it's going to do is it's going to tell us um, that a form update is required. Um, keep in mind, we have updated the system with workstation set up for math um, that we could have done last year. Well, there could be updated forms online uh, that we want to uh, update. So. Uh, and I'm not going to update them now because this will take several minutes uh, to do. Um, you could click on the automatic update button, and essentially every time you go to process, uh, or you, every time you go to uh, uh, process through electronic reporting, it will first go out and look for the most up-to-date form. Okay, so you will get this uh, box. I would advise you to go ahead and hit automatic update. Um, for demonstration purposes, we're going to hit continue slide. So the first, first thing it's doing is saying, are you sure uh, you want to process for 2010 because um, the foreign year is in 2011. So we're going to hit OK. Of course, you know, our system is in 2010, but as long as you're processing in the current year, it should be OK. And we're now going to uh, go through a wizard. Um, first part of our wizard is saying, um, what do you want to do? Do you want to test out running 1099s and 1096s with 25 of your recipients? Do you want to test drive with all your recipients? Or no thanks, I'm ready to go. Um, I would suggest uh, that you either test drive with all of them or you're ready to go. Because uh, you're going to see in the next several um, windows, um, this is a good way for us to check uh, our data. So I'm actually going to test drive with all my recipients. Bring it up. No thanks. I'm ready to go. First thing it's doing is it's showing me my taxpayer ID. Now, of course, I have this set up like this company. You can, uh, uh, if you see this erroneous, that's where you're going to want to go to company maintenance and make a change. And of course, it's pushing over all the information from something they can. Um, it doesn't push over the contact name and controller. Uh, uh, these uh, will go on your uh, on your tax form. And it's going to continue to ask me which type of filer I'm filing for my company. I'm a third-party pay tax preparer. You guys, you're going to be selecting I'm filing for my company employer. And when we go into W-2s in a minute, you're going to see that you may have some uh, state and local tax uh, accounts um, that can be processed on the forms. With 1099s, we don't have any. So they'll be blank. And we're going to hit Next. And it's going to ask us if we want to process multiple 1099s for the same PIN number. We're going to say no. We're going to process uh, single 1099s. If you have multiple companies um, that process on the same PIN, you can essentially go across multiple companies and process them all at once. So now it's actually grabbing our um, information from our AP module. 
And it's essentially, you know, putting it into an area that we can check. Now, in this case, we have five recipients um, that are going to uh, have 1099, uh, or at least process 1099 that are above $600. So the first thing it's saying is verify recipient tax clear ID. Now you can see that one of my folks uh, is blank. Um, essentially, that means that we don't have anything populated in vendor maintenance for them. Now I can certainly continue to process, but you're going to see that it's going to stop us and it's going to require that we go in and fix it. Second piece is verify the check that the FEIN is checked um, in this box. Again, it's going to stop us. It's not checked. So here we go. We want to continue, but it's telling us that there's an error. It's really not going to allow us to continue with the learning this information. So we have to go in and uh, correct it. So at this point, I'm going to populate it with a number. I'm going to check it off. And I'm going to hit next. So verify the recipient. Uh, name and email address. So again, um, in this case, it's going to require that we have something in here. So I'm going to go back to correct. Robert. And I'm going to continue. Now, really, what I would suggest is if you have any type of errors like this, you really go back uh, to vendor maintenance and correct them. That way, the next time you process them, um, you don't have to, you know, manually uh, fix this information again. Okay. Hey, Robert. Uh huh. Are, are you gonna Are you gonna go through vendor maintenance to just show an example of how it should be set up so that it flows through here properly? Sure. So if you go into vendor maintenance and we'll pull up the first vendor. You're going to notice that the address is not uh, uh, correct. So in this case, uh, I'm going to put 999 Paloma Drive. The second address is going to populate in. Um, it's a, you can see the fields in here are essentially the same fields that we have um, in vendor maintenance, uh, with the only difference being um, that vendor maintenance has three fields versus the 1099 only uh, allows you for two. Okay. Other than that, the city, state, zip are all going to get pushed over, um, as well as uh, uh, as well as the name. So where do you put where do you put the tax ID number and the box number? Okay. Good point. Good point. So when we go into the additional tab. You're going to see that the uh, social security here, we're going to set it up. So this is an individual, so we're going to set them up with an attack by D number, just like that. And of course, this is where everything where your 1099, you know, originates. So, okay. um, so essentially to start processing with 1099, you have to come in here, set them up either as a business or individual with a default form. You're going to give them either a their own business. You can ask for tax payer ID number if they're individual. You can ask for their social. A default box number. And I'll, we'll go over what the boxes are in a second. So I'm going to give them box seven. And then if there's a miscellaneous box nine. So I'm going to hit yes. So we're going to wait for the 1099 area. Now. You can see that uh, when I click on the 1099 box, it's opening up a miscellaneous uh, 1099 form type for calendar year 2010. Now, after you set someone up in 1099 and you start processing checks, these numbers will essentially populate. So in this case, I have $12,000 paid um, for the year for this vendor. Now, if you find that you have for 2010 somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, we'll say around forty thousand dollars that you process, but your 1099 shows a different amount, all you have to do is come in here and overwrite 
what's in there. Because this is the information that's going to get uh, populated on the system right now. Okay? Can I, can I ask a question so, about that? Sure. Um, is there a way to automatically have it go in and recalculate the 1099 history back for the whole calendar year? That can't because um, take for, uh, it doesn't because you may have situations where you have uh, contractors, independent contractors, that you pay um, both 1099 uh, income as well as maybe uh, reimbursable expenses that aren't 1099. So um, uh, they just don't have that functionality to say, you know, okay. uh, they haven't added that functionality to say, you know, just go in here, take the total and put it in here. Um, maybe in the future there could be something that says, you know, they can choose, you know, which ones you want to be 1099, add them up, and then put it in there. Um, but right now there's not. So what you really have to do is, is you know, usually you'll run a, a vendor payment history report for that vendor and essentially identify which payments are 1099 and which aren't. Okay? Okay. But right now it is, it is a manual process. So once this information is correct for all of your vendors, then, um, you know, again, that, that definitely should be done before you even get going with 1099. Um, so once you, uh, once you have that information, then it gets populated into these buckets accordingly. Okay? So keep in mind, anything I do here is not going to write back to vendor maintenance. But anything I do in the vendor maintenance will push over into electronic reporting. Okay? So again, I changed it from 12 to 40,000 in uh, my 10 and 9 history, I would have to go in and close everything and then rerun it for this to automatically go up to 40,000. Okay, I'm going to say no. Oops. Oh, I about that. I close it out. Let's go back in here. And we'll start that back up again. And it'll just take a second. And we're going to hit accept. I'm going to hit continue to fire just for our demonstration. And I'm going to hit continue with 2010. And I'm going to walk through everything we just did. You know what? I did not accept. So we're going to accept the prompt. You can see at this point, um, see, I thought I changed it to 40,000. Nope, I left it at 12,000. So if I changed it to 40, it would have updated box 7 to 40. Okay? But at this point, you're going in here and just really doing another check um, uh, for your numbers and for your hash total. Okay. Once you accept all the prompts, it's telling you in each step um, what you should be looking out for. Verify that the filing state is correct. At this point now, we have two options. You can go to other options, and you can print um, the recipient. Uh, you can print the recipient. 1099 copy. You can put the federal uh, 1099, 1096 copy. And actually, you can also print out a state 1099 reconciliation form that you can give with your, uh, 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 with any, uh, uh, you know, D6 or, uh, or state reconciliation form meet. Um, at this point, if you click on these buttons here, we're not doing anything e-filing, but we will be able to take your 1099 forms that you purchased from either Sage or Staples or uh, Office Depot, and you can essentially print it. Okay? 
You don't have to worry about them being misaligned, about dealing with any sort of crystal. Um, the fact that we're, we've downloaded the form uh, means that they are, will be aligned, and we can process that. So I'm going to hit next. Now it's going to tell us, are you sure you want to continue? Because you can actually continue with the complete service for a charge. Now, I guess I'll talk about this service. Um, what Sage has done is, is partnered with um, a, a third-party service called Atrix, um, which can actually print your forms for you, mail them uh, to your 1099 uh, folks, uh, as well as e-file your 1099 and 1096, all for the low price of $1.69 a uh, person. Uh, now, there is a minimum fee of $24.95, so uh, instead of the $8.45, in mind that's an option. They're going to take your information and and then um, we're going to pretty much be done. You're going to push it off uh, to them um, during this process and then they're going to mail and um, uh, mail the 1099 to your uh, uh, to your vendors as well as process uh, the state form or state and federal form uh, electronically. So again, if we were to do this without uh, uh, taking advantage of the e-filing needs, then you can certainly continue through this process. Say, no, I don't want to, you know, take advantage of the complete 1099 e-filing service. So I'm going to ask you if you want divider sheets when printing. So the divider sheets uh, essentially allow you to um, print a sheet between the forms. Uh, keep in mind if you have your form, you know, your 1099, and then your 1096, um, you would just want to be sure if you don't use divider forms that you put the right amount of 1099 in there, um, and then, you know, take the extra out, you know, in between printing. At this point, it's telling you what it's going to print. And now, it's actually going to let me show you what it's doing. So it's going to be report number one is processing the 1099 miscellaneous. Um, at this point, you can hit print. You're going to put your forms in. I'm sorry, you're going to put your forms in and hit print. Uh, this is what it should look like. Okay? But keep in mind, you still have to purchase the forms, and, um, uh, and, uh, and it'll certainly pull them in in this manner. Uh, you know, at some point, you know, until the government comes out with with allowing you to print these forms, you know, in black and white without having, you know, their federal forms, um, you still have to buy the forms and essentially put them in a printer. But you can see that uh, it's essentially go. It's going to go through the 1099. Then it's going to go through the 1096, which is something that you cannot currently uh, print out of that without electronic reporting. And I selected uh, recipient three. Um, you can see that this is now a you know four part form uh, for a tenor design miscellaneous. And if we wanted to print the instructions And of course, the payer can then and I. So it's essentially printing out everything that we've selected. Okay. So at this point, we really haven't. Uh, we've uh, gone for electronic reporting, uh, but we haven't really uh, filed anything. Um, I'm going to show you uh, both in 1099s and in W2 uh, what e filing will allow you to do. I'm going to walk to, at this point, our payroll module. Under Periton, we're going to have federal e-filing reporting. And as you're going to see, not only can you do W2 slash W4, but you can file 941. You can process I9. Um, you can process a multitude of forms, as well as for each 
state of California, we have the DE9. Um, in other, you know, other states, uh, uh, there is their respective uh, payroll form. And so we're going to walk through on the federal side processing a typical uh, W-2 form. And I think I'm just going to do it for one employee as opposed to all of them. I'm going to go through the tax year again. We're in 2010 with this company. I'm going to hit accept. And I'm going to continue expired. I'm going to continue expired. I'm going to hit no. So we're going to go through the same process that we did with 1099. I'm actually going to go through processing. I'm going to ask me for my federal ID number once again that I have set up with something like that. I'm going to put myself as a contact person. And I'm going to be filing for my company. At this point now, uh, there's uh, some more information uh, for W-2s that are required. Um, so in California, we have uh, state withholding. This is our tax ID number that will get pushed over into um, the bottom section of our W-2. Same thing for my disability. Um, uh, usually, this is the same account number um, as as my state number. I'm going to populate it here, and then state employment. Now, uh, in California, this is usually the same. It comes in blank because in other states uh, it may not be. It may be a separate uh, uh, account number. At this point now, it's going to ask us several questions. Have you hired any employees that qualify for tax credits under the IRS? Do you have any employees who are not subject to Medicare or Social Security? Do you have any employees who earn tips? Uh, it's essentially asking us questions that may impact the following screen. Um, so far, most of our employees we've had, um, you know, no have been sufficient quality answer. So definitely review them when you're a processor. Control number, um, at this point, uh, you may or may not have a control number. The kind of payer, uh, to, uh, for the most part, you're going to be a 941, unless you fall into one of these other options. Um, you could, you know, 501c is a you know, non-government, non-profit organization, or you could be another, you know, governmental agency. Um, so at this point, I'm going to put down apply. And again, you'll know if you have these options uh, to enter. Uh, this is where you enter so that they can be printed out of the W-2. At this point, um, if you have multiple payroll data files, you can consolidate them at this point. Um, at this point, I'm just going to take information from my ABC company. And it's now doing the same thing we did with 1099, grabbing the W-2 data that's coming from employee maintenance, and I only selected my one employee. Now keep in mind, on the W-2 side, um, you're going to find that information when you go into employee maintenance. It's going to grab this information from employee maintenance, and if you go to tax summary, and you go to federal, it's going to grab this information. So of course, um, if you have any corrections uh, with your W-2, um, you can always come in here and um, and essentially, you know, manually change it. Now again, uh, you know, we give Sage gives you the ability to go in here and manually update this just for W-2 purposes. Uh, but that, that's certainly at your discretion. Um, uh, you certainly want to, you know, make sure this is correct because this is what's getting uh, uh, printed out uh, on the W-2. At this point, now that that's correct, we're going to go through the same process that we did with our 1099. 
It's going to verify the employee information, which is essentially in yellow. You can always maximize this if you want to get more visibility on the screen. At this point, we can hit next. It's telling us that my social security number with a nine is incorrect. So I'm actually going to change it. So I do. Now keep in mind again, you're going to be you're going to definitely want to have this corrected um, in employee maintenance. So if you have this erroneous, um, I would suggest you go in there first to fix it. Okay, we're going to verify state wages, and it's telling us uh, box three plus box seven must be within. So it must be 6.2% of a dollar uh, in box four. So obviously, it's, um, it's you know, tell me I have problems. Um, usually what we find with this is um, our numbers here may be, you know, we're going to put it to or sometimes get five cents. Um, actually, you know, you're okay at that point. You're not going to have any issues. Um, if you find that it's you know a dollar to a dollar five, you'll want to determine if you want to make the change here or something has happened you know with process and payroll throughout the year that causes you know that number to be incorrect. At this point, I'm going to continue without correcting. So I am now back at uh, the area of selecting either printing out W two W three or e-filing. Now I should mention the e-file. You have to do one more thing. You're going to have to go to a website called Atrix. And you have to set up an account with Atrix. So again, this is a third party. This is the third party that uh, Manager, the account, and uh, let's make sure I get out of line here. There we go. So we'll give that a minute to populate because essentially as we go through this process, we'll go ahead and do the best value here. You're going to find that it's going to say, okay, um, do you also want to see the archive of your W-2 showing 29.95? We're going to say right back here. It's going to say, do we want divider sheet? Um, you know, I usually say yes. And at this point, it's going to go through our options again. If you want to print out for your copy um, the employer W-2, you can. I'm going to say no. At this point, you can print out the federal W-2. You can print it out. Finally, the W-3. Now at this point, what it's doing, so it's essentially getting our information ready to go. It's going out to Atrix's Atrix's website and it's connecting. Um, Hello? Oh. Have you guys just lost contact with me? With my screen? Hey Robert, it looks like we uh we kinda lost uh your signal. Oh, now it's back. Okay. Um, though I'm not seeing your, your screen change at all. Yeah, hold on one second. Okay. Is that any better? 
Um, it is looking the same to me. Let me try my screen now. Um, let me pause it. I'm going to show my screen once again. Okay. Okay. Can you now see my screen again? Mm, no. Let me, uh, let's see. I'll try to change presenters back to me and then try to change presenters okay. back to you. I'll try that. Is it asking you to show your screen yet, Robert? Uh, not yet. So I'm wondering if I lost connection. Um, let's see. So you're now the presenter? No, you should be now. Okay. Can you see my screen now? No, I cannot. Okay. Is, well, is everybody else just seeing the, the white screen? Gotta gotta love technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's uh I think I I have see connection here is a bit choppy. But that's okay because um, we've gone through almost everything with the exception of uh, showing what, um, how to process or, or push the information to enter to the website. So, hey, Robert, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. what I'm seeing is just the white screen that says ISM Lunch and Learn. Yeah, I, I'm thinking somehow I lost connection. Um, okay. And it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get it back to Bryce, but I'll just go ahead and explain a couple of things because we've gone through really uh, setting up and installing um, electronic reporting and then um, how you can access it both in AT and payroll and going through the prompts. The last piece that we didn't uh, review was um, actually going online and um, if you do choose um, uh, ATRIX to um, uh, take your information electronically. Um, you can go to ATRIX's website, which is www.aatrix.com, and there you will enroll um, and set up an account. Um, <clears throat> when you set up an account, you'll be essentially setting up a username and password. Um, you know what? There we go. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, excellent, excellent. So when you go to Atrix's uh, website, um, there you can actually enroll um, and set up an account. By enrolling, it's going to ask you for your username and password. Uh, it will set up a username and password essentially going to ask you for information. And at this point, it's also going to ask for um, uh, payment type information. Because when you conclude with sending your information, um, when you conclude with sending your information in that, it's going to ask you for your ATRIX username and password. It's going to essentially ask you for your payment information. If it's $24.95 or if it's you know, more than that, it's on the number of employees that 1099 we have. And um, you can then essentially, once they accept payment, um, uh, they grab your information. Uh, almost like if you file taxes with TurboTax, same type of process. Get in your payment, um, it tells, they tell you that they've grabbed your information and that uh, you can check back in a couple of days to make sure that uh, everything was successful. Okay? So that was really the last piece was going to a website and setting up an account there, which is separate, uh, you know, from 
your statesoftware.com account. Um, and at this point, um, you'll be ready to send your information uh, to Atrix. And that really is if you have to uh, process uh, 1099s electronically, or uh, you know, if you have over 225 employees and you have to file electronically with uh, the government, um, uh, you can come in here and essentially do it. Okay. Any questions? Nope. So again, I would say definitely, you know, setting up. Um, uh, 1099 for electronic reporting is as easy as going to the WK setup folder, getting that set up. When you're when you're ready to go, um, you will need an account with SafeSoftware.com. If you don't have an account um, and you need uh, help with getting one, um, then let us know and uh, we can essentially take a look at your if you're established as a contact with Sage, and if not, you know. Uh, either I or a support team can help you get established. Um, after that, you are ready to go. You can go into um, payroll period end for federally filing reporting there, or you can go into AP and report and go into form 10 and I and filing and reporting. Okay, any questions? Not on my end. Okay. Nope, I'm all set. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, I think next month we're going to be uh, uh, having another webinar for Custom Office, um, probably how to uh, create some UDFs and maybe even some uh, user defined tables. So that's always a, a nice presentation. And, um, and then again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, you know shoot me an email at robert at goism.com. And uh, be sure to answer them promptly. Thanks for being with uh, with me being at the airport today. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you okay, bye. I think I'm going to uh, disconnect. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye. -bye.